that's a manual scan we got playing there. Awesome. And it uh, kind of goes along with our super special guest. We have uh, this is ep- episode 10 of the Vespa Motorsport podcast. Oh, yeah. So, and uh, we have a little disclaimer here. We'll have Kevin Reed. So, All right, here we go. Our little disclaimer. The views and, di- uh, the, the views and opinions <laughs> expressed on this show are those of the individual guests and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Vespa Motorsport or ScooterWest.com. All right. Once again, and my name my name is uh, Kevin Stram. Right next to me is Alex. Alex Kahn. No. And No? That yeah, is. Okay. It was today. Uh, And welcome to episode 10 of the Vespa Motorsport Podcast, sponsored by ScooterWest.com. All things Scooter. Yeah. And we're kind of continuing with our uh, Scooter History Series here uh, with a very, very special guest. I threw two varies in there. How's that? Awesome. Uh, Bart Mendoza. I know that guy. Yeah. We all all know him. If you're around the scooter scene, uh, music scene in San Diego, you pretty much, you probably run into Bart Mendoza. And he hasn't aged. He hasn't aged somehow in uh, the last <laughs> yeah. thirty years yeah, actually, since I've known him. <laughs> I have a comment so, on that actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, a living here. I have it. He is a living legend and local music and scooter scene. Uh, he's lived in San Diego. I think all your life, right? Yep. You're yep. born and raised. Yep. And he bought his P200 brand new, his original P200. From Vespa the Beaches, right, 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 yeah, and that was probably what what year was that? Actually, 1980. In 1980, yeah. So he bought it brand new, and that one you put probably 100,000 miles on, maybe more, more than that, yeah, more, more than, than that. that. I seem to recall coming in here at one point, of yeah, and he's on his discussing uh, that second P200. Well, the speedo cable was, I think, broken for a while. Yeah, yes. yeah, it was broken for a while, and I only <laughs> so, have the second one because I got hit by a car at some right. point, so kind of yeah. took that one out, but I got another one exactly. So you're on, you're on your third one. Uh, no, second one. So just second P200. Second one. Okay. Second P200. Okay. Same model as the first yeah. one I had. Right. Really? Yeah, same model, same color as the first one I had. Wow. Pretty so, cool. um, so before 1980, you were kind of in the mod scene uh, even before you had a scooter, right? Before uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, That's yeah. kind of what kind of got you into scootering and stuff. Yeah, we got into it um, because I was given a bunch of albums when I was about, I don't know, 15 or 16 years old, the right. zombies and things like oh, yeah. that. And right. I kind of looked at the way they were dressed and went, that's not too far off from what I'm doing. Yeah. So I kind of got into it that way. And then, of course, um, I started working uh, as a volunteer at KPRI. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I was the program director at KLGH, the La Jolla High radio station. We had a sister station mm-hmm. at KPRI. Right. And one day I walked in there and they were playing uh, target practice with all these records. <laughs> and I said, w- what's all this? Stuff? They're pulp pole shooting <laughs> yeah exactly just actually smashing them against the wall <laughs> oh, no. and i you know being a vinyl junkie even then i was like why what are you doing it's like fahrenheit 451 and, and except with records exactly <laughs> so um the guy says well th- this is this is horrible crap and i said yeah. well, well can i have them the guy said yeah. yeah sure take them one man's trash another man's exactly. treasure. exactly and it was uh i remember it was like three or four police singles the, the first yeah. five jam singles uh, elvis costello yeah. uh the records all that kind of stuff right that was basically punk rock so they right. wouldn't play it on the radio and they were they were smashing them on the wall i took all those home I still have all those white labels. I did sell a couple of them. Those yeah. things are priceless. We have promotional promotional yeah. copies. So yeah. that yeah. also explains why Manual Scan was doing like jam covers and stuff mm-hmm. like that in the yeah. mid seventies. Nobody else was. We were right. getting the records directly from the station that they weren't playing. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And uh, in the early days, like what there's a. Uh, Positive action, or po- yeah, positive action. I think that came right? a little bit later. That Se- came later. Secret Society was one of the first ones. First, I, okay. I joined in eighty four. In eighty four. Nineteen eighty four. Okay. And so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was uh, the, the original purpose of that was guys' night out. You know, everybody had girlfriends mm-hmm. and wives and right. stuff. So we'd all meet at Sunday. La po- uh, Sundays yeah. at La Posta at eight o'clock right. and hang right. out. Okay, so like that, and it ended up growing to yeah. include chapters in uh, San Francisco and you know co members out in right. New Jersey and so on and so forth. So, and, and and some of my fond memories of you were actually were off the record or where. Warehouse, warehouse records. You were. I at. worked. Yeah, pretty much I my remember. whole life, with one short exception. Right. I've worked music jobs. Uh, right. You know. So basically, I was at the warehouse, and then right. uh, Liquor's Pizza first, actually. But then the Liquor's warehouse. Pizza. Oh yeah. yeah. Liquor's Pizza. Oh, in the man. warehouse. Scott is looking at us like, like what? what is Liquor's Pizza? <laughs> yeah, Liquor's Pizza man. was the that greatest. Was, store that was on the, the planet. best name of record yeah, store. Best like, record yeah. store on Ever. the planet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I worked there, and then um, off the record, I was there mm-hmm. for about uh, oh. Ten years. So it's funny because I remember like yeah. just stumbling in these record stores and always seeing you like you know for I think warehouse first and then off the record oh Bart's here now <laughs> you know yeah. it was and always like it was always cool walking there and see a friendly face like behind the counter and stuff yeah oh, hey Bart what's up at the same time I was also working for Diamond Distribution the comic book company yeah, so right. I worked for Marvel Comics and all that kind of stuff too yeah and, and then see I'd walk in there and see you there too yeah and then, and then <laughs> at the same time I was also the rep for Capitol Records for, for yeah. San Diego County right so I'd handle all the bands whether it was Duran yeah. Duran or Tina Turner whatever was coming to town yeah. to work on that stuff so, so I was but, real busy that's living the dream man like working at 
comic we're a comic distributor working at record stores like riding a scooter i mean living uh, in san diego i have not grown up yet i'm only yeah. 53 so i've got some time left yeah, yeah I got right some, <laughs> that's, so, that's, that's so awesome years. though <laughs> There's still like, hope for me. Yeah, There's still yeah. hope for me. I didn't say that. I just said I'm only 53. <laughs> Why do you need to grow up, though? Nobody needs to grow up. Yeah, well, you know, I, I got lucky in that I was able to kind of create the job I wanted. Right. Because there's nobody else doing all the stuff I yeah. do. Well, right? I did that, too, here with the scooter shop. Exactly. Oh, no. Actually, that, that's a, it's a very rare thing, you know, <laughs> yeah. to, get to right. get to play with the your passion. own passion, yeah. Right. But at this point, you know, 10, 20, 30 years later... What started out as a hobby and kind of right. fun, not looking you've gotten. I, yeah. I've got 19 newspapers I write for every week. Yeah, right. So it just becomes kind of a, a career. Yeah. There are times that when I think, like, God, are you, are you nuts? I mean, like, <laughs> you could have, like, a nice house and a regular – and you could sleep and things like that. But yeah, this right. is more fun. Yeah. It's yeah, way right. more fun. Yes. Way more fun. Yes. So uh, besides, you know, doing all this, working at record stores, comic book distributors, writing article, you're actually in uh, several bands, too, actually. I'm in a bunch of yeah. bands. I'm, yeah. in, uh, I'm in Manual Scan. That's the fa- the main band. And right. we just got back together and did it. Uh, what, what year did what, – Manual Scan, when did it – Manual start? Scan formed in 1980. The year we left high school, ah, okay. Ahoy High. Yeah, which okay. is where we were based out of his kids. Right. Um, and what was the original? It was uh, Kevin Ring. It was Kevin Ring, Paul Kaufman, oh. me, and David Fleminger. Yeah. Uh, Kaufman got replaced by Paul Bruin, and that okay. became the, the version that ended up recording. Of course, mm-hmm. Paul Bruin ended up playing with Uncle Joe's Big Old Driver, Drip Tank, and all the other yeah, bands. Right. So, so he did all right. You know, <laughs> half of San Diego has been in one of my bands right, at right. some point. So it's just like, yeah, everybody's been in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that all came out of La Jolla High uh, 1980. Yeah. And uh, we just regrouped the group. Last year, because we got an offer to go to Europe. Well, m- most of the members went to sh- were in shambles too, right? No, actually, no. the shambles okay. was a, a Kevin mi- Ring and you. It was me and Kevin, right? But the other three guys in the shambles were the Telto Hearts. So ah, it was a mix okay. of manual scan of the Telto okay. Hearts. Oh, rad! Okay. Yeah, yeah. So rad. that's what that was. Okay. And then uh, we had the Odd Man Out was one of the Crawdaddies. Yeah. So okay. Like that. And at, uh, funny enough, we just talked about. Um, we just got an offer yesterday for the shambles to go back to Europe. So oh, okay. It's like, but but manual scan. They're actually people may not, but in Spain you're actually pretty popular there right in in most of europe and japan yeah, right. we would actually do quite well over there yeah, as a right. matter of fact no, uh, no 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 you're not popular here too no 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 like, but i mean it's but over di- there you're you're rock stars i'll put it this way every single manual scan record ever released has huh. been released in europe nothing in the u.s yeah there's never okay. anything released in the u.s well the f- well, well, singles yeah right well right. even the albums the albums oh, okay. are from europe yeah the new oh, album and all okay. the yeah comes out in spain yeah. we're actually signed all three of my bands are signed the shambles oh, to an actual because li- here yeah. here well here you release something but it's independent label or is it or not or? um no no no, no. Okay. actually the okay. stuff the stuff manual scan stuff has always been on other oh, labels just we just european okay <clears throat> they just send me a couple hundred copies and i just okay. take them to stores myself right. that's basically right. what it comes okay. down to yeah okay but yeah um true stories and the shambles are signed to bickerton records in spain and uh manual scan signed to snap yeah so okay. that, that's who flies us over there and does yeah. all that stuff for us cool and yeah. is all that like available uh, download and stuff too. You can get on iTunes. Yeah, and all you can that, get on the regular stuff, downloads okay. and all kind of stuff. And in, in San Diego, because it's imported and stuff, I usually just drop them off like at Record okay. City, Music Theory, places like that, okay. and get them direct from. But the if band. you actually want to go online and buy some of the stuff, you can go on iTunes and find Manual Scan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's yeah. there's okay. tons of stuff. I think between the three bands, I've got okay. more than a hundred releases. So okay. you'll, you'll find something out there. Right, ninety nine cents a song. <laughs> ninety nine cents a song. Yeah, and there's, <laughs> there's tons of merch. That's my favorite thing. There's all yeah. kinds of uh, t shirts. Well, and the button. Cafe Press kind of stuff or something, where it's kind of print on demand. Yeah, well. I don't yeah. know. It's got okay. nothing to do with me. I just yeah, go okay. online and go like, hey, look, this guy's selling new T-shirts with Martin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's the same with actually Vespa Motorsport. You go on eBay and there's all this bootleg Vespa Motorsport yeah. stuff. I, I, like, okay. At this level, I find it flattering. You know? Yeah, it's like, right, you know, right. I'm not losing exactly. it. I, right. I well, it helps promote the the band or the music well, or, the, or the shop or well, whatever. Well, there's, right. there's, a, there's a, a vinyl album that came out with manual scan on it. You know, I can't afford to do that kind of stuff. So whoever, Mr. Bootlegger, bootleg. whoever you were, thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah, right. You, know, it, <laughs> you get your music out there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You didn't make any money off it. but the way I figure is somebody's putting my stuff up illegally online mm-hmm. you know digital i'm, I'm yeah. not into that at all but if somebody took the time to make an album right. cover paid a couple thousand dollars to press it. Up, yeah thank you yeah, yeah. right Come on. Well, i'm okay cool. with i'm okay with that yeah right. yeah Especially if they did colored vinyl. <clears throat> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, the one, the one thing we've never released... Bootleg like colored vinyl. We've even been on a flexi-disc, because uh, yeah. in the mid-80s, uh, we were on the cover of In the Crowd magazine. They included a flexi-disc. That was really cool. Oh, yeah. The one yeah. thing we've never had is a picture disc, and that's hopefully in the next uh, year there will be one. A, a bootleg one? <laughs> uh, hopefully not a bootleg one, because I actually do like getting paid for things occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. <clears throat> so talk about getting paid for stuff, uh, freelance writing. So you've written for, <laughs> written for like, every, Union Tribune, Reader... Uh, uh, I've written... Uh, 
any any local paper here in San Diego? I, I cover everything from San Ysidro to Del Mar. I write for everybody from the Imperial Beach Connection uh-huh. to the La Jolla Village News. I cover, and that's every issue. I have a music right. feature in that kind of thing. So if you read some music article here in San Diego, it was probably written by you, most it's or. Me- or very most, likely, and very if, you're, likely. if you're a tourist and you read the Time Out guides, for example, the mm-hmm. books I right. wrote that stuff about San Diego. That's all yeah. my. That's all me as well. Right. So um, I write for everybody right now. I'm in the process of. Uh, I can't say the titles, uh-huh. but um, I'm doing a couple of movie adaptations for. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. For uh, I'm, I'm doing the books for those, yeah. and those okay. actually will have a heavy mod content as oh, well. Oh, rad! So Sweet, yeah, rad. there's nice. some really cool like mod movies out well, there. Well, what's, what's what's happened is is that we're at the 20 25 year cycle, mm-hmm. and right. the people right. are now. Over Old enough that were in that scene then are now making movies producing on their own stuff, producing right. stuff. So that's basically what's happened. That's one of the lucky things we've had about San Diego that in the 25 year cycle that happened, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the people got into positions of some sort of power where mm-hmm. they can actually help out the community. Right. I mean, Alex does that with the shop in, in right. a small way, but also Tim Piles, Tim Mays, oh, yeah. myself, right. etc. All kind of like you know helping the greater community at large. So right. we got very lucky that there's people in our community that give back that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Tim Mays. He's oh, he's, he's amazing. Producing so much and so many shows and yeah. Cosmo. Of course, and, and just to drop a hint, yeah. Tim May's manual scan towards the end of the summer. Yeah. Look out for an announcement for that. Yeah. Sometime in the All next right, two okay. weeks, will be an announcement. All right. So. I know Buck Fast Super B just played at Cosba recently. So yeah, we, did, we had a really show. good night. We yeah. had a really good night there. It was fantastic. Yeah, the the reunion show went really well. And for those who came out and are supporting the band, thank you so much. We definitely appreciate it. Well, it's, we're at the time now where. Um, People are looking back to things that, like we said earlier, are tangible. And uh-huh. Buckfast Super B goes back to that era. I mean, it's not yeah. that long ago if, if we think about it. But really, uh-huh. so much has changed in the last 10 years where, I mean, you can right. get a number one record by sneezing these days practically. You know, So uh-huh. right. uh, to have music that's actually played by bands that, mean, that meant something to people is a big deal. Yeah. 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 So. We, we, we are experiencing that with the interest in, in having a band that ha- plays loud rock music in a club and people are there and they're digging it if somebody had told me in 1981 you know when i was sitting in the room with the bangles waiting to not get signed um that you know literally 35 40 years later we'd be you know playing a sold out show in madrid uh what huh no way yeah right it's impossible but here we are you know so there you go um so so to your credit i mean the music uh writing but then also you produce like too because uh yeah. Yeah. This. Basically, if it's got to do with music, I'm happy to help out wherever yeah. I can. And uh, somebody asked me to come in and do vocals, guitar, write right. a song for them, whatever. I've written songs for dozens of right. bands. And yeah. so basically, if it has to do with music and I can be involved, I'd like to be. Yeah. You know, um, and it, it's kind of neat, too, that sometimes it gives back accidentally. I'll give mm-hmm. you an example. True Stories uh, recorded um, a song, Blue Chair. A song I don't even like, uh, but my ex-girlfriend really liked this, so she wanted me to do it. So I went ahead and did it just to be nice and whatever. Yeah. Didn't think much about it, didn't care mm-hmm. about it, put it out, whatever. Yeah. I just got the word yesterday that on Wednesday we have to go to the El Cajon Community Center because mm-hmm. the album that we were on raised enough money that mm-hmm. they gave it to Mr. Holland's Opus, who's wow. donating the money to a local school to buy instruments right. for the That's music rad. program. That is so cool. So it comes around in weird right. ways you don't even expect. Accidentally. Yeah, great. accidentally. It's accidentally like, paying forward. Yes, exactly. Nice. So, yeah, it's, That's it's, rad. Good things happen sometimes by accident. Uh, what's this, the uh, CD, CD uh, you bring by free... Uh Oh, staring, staring at the staring sun. At the yeah, sun. that's the other thing. We got volume twelve that we're working on right now. The right. basics, Normandy Wilson, all kinds of bands yeah. on it. The basics, um, those guys are aw- those yeah, guys are amazing. Yeah, they Four are mod great. kids. Yeah. I've seen them a few times. Oh yeah, they're just crazy. So, so it's, much energy. It's it's a way to promote San Diego's music. And my thing is that um, there's no reason why things shouldn't be free if everybody bands together. And so mm-hmm. we do this event. Ninety one X and Tim Piles helps right. out with loudspeaker, mm-hmm. and we you know we put out this two CD set to promote comic books in san diego as well right. we right. get local well-known artists to promote yeah. their china uh, did that one cover right the with the characters right. of her comic books hanging yeah. out in from the casbah right the next cover i can reveal now uh is by jeremy cox who does spider-man vampires batman uh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff right and his cover is the vampires characters attacking uh, the star of india downtown wow it's a, gorgeous, right. it's a yeah. painting it's beautiful i've seen uh, it already yeah. it looks great so we're hoping to have that out um by mid-july um we're gonna have some announcements on 91x mm. in two weeks okay and so yeah that's piles, yeah. we've been doing that since 1991 
you want. And, and, and they're free. It's they're like free. free at record, like record stores usually have. You can even stuff. pick them up here for free. Yeah, yeah, actually, okay. yeah you always bring in a little yeah, stack. Yeah. The whole point is that um, we want to, to uh, expose this music to people. Yeah. And this is the easiest way to do it. And then on top of that, we do two free shows, an over 21 and under 21 show, mm. that people can just come and get the disc set as well. Yeah, so, it's so amazing. It's so great. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and again, everybody contributes. You know, yeah. Tim Mays lets us use the club. Uh, Alma Queen Bee lets us use the venue. Right. The bands uh, contribute the songs. And you know, we all put it together and it happens. If, if people cool. want to find out about this, how do they get a hold of you? Or, or well, just what's your... The Facebook is the easiest thing. I'm, okay. just, I'm on there 24 hours a day. Just Bart about. Mendoza Facebook. Facebook yeah, yeah. Right. There are, however, <laughs> um, it's kind of strange, but there are other fake Bart Mendozas in San Diego. <laughs> so other pages Watch have... Watch out been, for the imitation Bart Mendozas. Yeah, yeah. So if it's only got, settle for the original. Most of those only have like one or two friends on them. Okay, okay. Like, but yeah. Well, like, how, how, how many you got, you think, to this date right now? On friends? Yeah. It's just about near 5,000. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty good. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's just fans I mean, and friends, friends, fans and fans. friends, and I've gotten to be very selective as to who I'm. <laughs> yeah, on. Like, right, right. Like girls in bikinis, you know, nah, thanks. Yeah, anyway. I know, right, right. Yeah. The ones are just spamming, kind of. Actually, Victor Voris had this good rule for him. He's like, if I've had a beer or drink with you, then you're you're my friend. If I haven't, if I haven't, then then. Sorry. I will automatically <laughs> friend you if you're holding an instrument in your picture. That's ah, an automatic okay, friend. See, I do, I do a similar thing. If you're a scooter in the picture, then I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I must a, know you some. <laughs> or, or at least you made the effort to deceive me properly. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. exactly, right. But yeah, some girl in a bikini and has no mutual friends is like, ah, no, no, you look, probably not. And there's like 22, 22 <laughs> friends that are all guys. Yeah. Right? It's all guys and all older guys at that. And then um, she only became a Facebook person two weeks ago. Yeah, like, right. no, no, no. Don't, don't think so. Right. <clears throat> Kevin friends all them, I'm sure. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I want to get back to scootering, though, because okay. you've had a scooter for, in San Diego for such a long time. Tell me a little bit more about like, what it was like when you first got your scooter. Was there a lot of other people with scooters? Did you see it kind of... Because you've been... You've seen... A couple of different scooter cycles. You've seen the '80s, mm -hmm. uh, the, mod, you know, the, the Quadrophenia the, yeah, mod the, revival, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you probably saw. You remember like the turn of the century, where well, kind of well, everything kind of. Well, there's little racer kids like Blur and like you know. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, uh, I appreciate terms like turn of the century. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it was 15, and 16 then, years ago. No, 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 I know. It's, 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 it's frightening already. And then there's Night yeah. Stalkers, which are like the Hell's Angels of scooter clubs. Well, you know, when, when I started <laughs> out, there was not a lot of people. Uh, yeah. That was basically when people were finding. Vespas and Lambrettas in people's garages. Mm -hmm. Right, old guys had old them. guys had yep. them. They old were men. cheap. I remember right. Steve Medico made his crash bars out of a school uh, a desk. Yeah, yeah, right. So, desk. yeah. So it was. It oh was, my god. Yeah. Where are those crash bars today? Those are amazing. Yeah. I need those. They sold on in eBay for a thousand dollars. Exactly. So it was. It was very <laughs> DIY, cool. and you know, we would uh, you know piece things together, and you know. Uh, yeah. So it wasn't a whole lot of people, but yeah. The, yeah, you go to Home Depot and you buy a towel rack and you like bolt that to the front of your bike and <laughs> all, that, all that kind of stuff, man. I was famous for the crate on the back of my scooter for decades. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah okay. So yeah. Um, you improvised. There was not a lot of people, but it was just it was just considered very very cool and very different. You know, I like the idea that it was different. I love the idea of the parking right. and the. I gas mean, there was a lot of customization going on. Yeah, yeah there, right. there really really was. Right. Um, I remember Kevin Ring. He had the uh, the little laurel reef off. Of, I think it was Cadillac, probably or yeah, something. Yeah, and, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we all, we all did what we could to make our Mercedes hubcaps and yeah, individual was, whatever we right. could steal was was, yeah. was, was <laughs> apropos. Um, and then I saw the you know when it, when the big resurgence came up when you'd get hundreds of people at. Mm -hmm. A jam concert, for example. Right, right. Um, that, that ended up being a little different, but it's the same thing as, as with anything. Once it gets to be that big, it gets to be a little posy. And I remember we were starting to make fun of it again. Uh, by the mid-'80s, there was like, uh, uh, oh, Twist Magazine would have uh, ads with the guys with their surfboards, with their Vespas. Yeah. And it was right. starting to become very, very commercial. Mm, right. But um, I can't see any other way of life. I've only ever driven a car because I was forced to. Yeah, and right. you don't, you don't right. even have a car license. Right? I don't, I've never had a car yeah. license, right. but I've driven a car, I think, three times. Uh, yeah. Out in the desert, where people think it's amusing because you know I can't right. hit anything, so that's <laughs> that's pretty. My eyes. Do you lean? Do you lean when you're driving the I car? I do so? lean. I do lean a little bit. You know, so so there is that. But um, <laughs> I, I do that. I do. You know, I totally lean in the like, turns. <laughs> think about the, all the things that you've talked about that I do. Right. 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 If I had a car, I wouldn't have been able to do them. Okay? Yeah, right, yeah, and that's because it's a different it's, lifestyle. It's yeah. a different lifestyle, and yeah. the expense of having a car right, is right. also just just phenomenal. Yeah. Like you know, by '86, I was already touring in Europe. 
Right. So, you know, figured that a car would have cost, you know, 10 grand. Right. That would have wiped all that stuff right out. Right. right. So, yeah. basically... Uh, money for having, instruments, money for, yeah, yeah <laughs> records, buying records, buying comics. Having yeah. the Vespa yeah. and being in San Diego in particular mm. is just, it's the perfect combination. It yeah. very rarely ever rains. You know, the right. weather's usually pretty good. I mean, it gets a little cold at night, so you get a jacket. Yeah. Big deal. Right. A parka. You know, An yeah. excuse to go clothes shopping? <laughs> yeah. excuse to buy a parka? You know, <clears throat> exactly. And then on top of that as well, like, even... At events where there's been problems, I remember when I went to see the Who at the stadium here. At Qualcomm. Right, I went. I went to that. Okay, that yeah. was great. Fun. That was amazing. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, I was in line to get out of the parking lot, right. and a police officer comes over. And it was me and my friend both had our scooters, and the officer walks over to us in traffic and goes. Hey, get out of here. And I'm like, well, we got to do just this. Go. He goes, no, no on the go. sidewalk. Just go. Just go. Yeah, just said, all right, go. So we're just zipping up the sidewalk. Going, right. This is cool, man. Yeah. Could, couldn't imagine doing that with a 4x4. Four four. No, uh, no, yeah. no so, not at all. Little yeah. things like that, you know. Right. Um, I like also, this is kind of neat as well, um, the conversations that start up with the scooter. Just, mm -hmm. I right. can't tell you how many times, and I'm sure you guys know, yeah, yeah. everywhere you go, it's like, hey, right. that's a cool scooter. Right. The funny thing is, as, as uh you viewers here can't don't know this, but my scooter's rusty, and, and the right. en the engine's nice, everything's yeah. good, but it's, it's, a, it's a restoration. It's a restoration, like and yeah, it is ugly. <laughs> I have it for a reason. But right. about, it has a patina. Yes, about yeah. two weeks ago, I'm walking. Down, uh, actually, I'm, I'm at a stoplight, and an yeah. old gentleman walks by and goes, "I like that," huh. and yeah. I said, "Oh, thank you." He goes, "No." That's to keep it from getting stolen, right? And I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, I do that with my car, too. He goes, just let it go. It's a, it's a long, no, no jack. Yeah, as long as the engine runs, that's all you really need. I go, yeah. When I had it painted, it kept getting stolen. Now right. Right. nobody wants it except for me. Yeah. It's a no jack. A no jack. Yeah. That's a genius <laughs> genius term. Alex coined that one. I did just coin that. Yeah, just came exactly. Up with that. There yeah, you so, go. So, you know, and then, of course. Bart, Bart invented it, though. The, uh, <laughs> the big thing that really pushed everything over was the founding of Secret Society. Right. The other scooter clubs, of course, very important to send you. Diego yeah. and did a whole lot of things. But Secret Society is the, the catalyst for everything. They're the ones that started yeah, everything. Right. In other words, when other people did rallies and events, they were doing it to compete with Secret Society. Yeah, well, right. We can do this better. We can do this right. different, whatever. And they saw them doing this stuff. And then, I mean, my earliest ones, I remember Jet Set. But, yeah, yeah, Jet but, Set. And there was but, a uh, Go Club. Know. Secret Society was before Jet Set. Though, Dancing yeah. Skeletons. Right. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of right. Coronado. There was a whole yeah. bunch of them. But you're right. Yeah, a lot of them were, probably came about with... You know, trying, yeah, seeing this one club doing stuff. It's like, oh, we got to yeah. do that. And, and the other thing, too, is that San Diego, um, and this is uh, true of the music scene um, as well as the scootering scene, it's a very tight knit community. I mean, it this is, is, right. This everybody is, kind of runs across yeah, everybody. This is Mayberry RFD. Yeah. And you can't pull rank. You know, it's just, yeah. you're just the guys. And so there's never right. really been beyond uh, a friendly competition, no. any problems. So that kind of right. helps unify things. Just a Cosmo Saturday night. Yeah, I ran into all these people I know. It's like, oh, we got many people here right yeah. now. Yeah. It's just some random show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So on. The follow up on the clubs from the 80s and yes. that, how many people would you imagine were in these individual clubs? Because there's not really that many people out there in clubs now. There's a lot of people that ride scooters, but they're mostly well, like, it's all God, business. It, it, it yeah, was pretty very, huge. It's it all business, huge. not like, so much pleasure. I, mean, so. I didn't come in until 1986, and I remember like a rally to Quadrophenia playing at the Kin. There was like a couple hundred scooters on there. Yeah. Like a random, random, you know, Friday night at Kin Club or Kin. Each wow. club, like Kin Secret Theater. Society, at its peak, probably had active about forty members. Wow, plus That's pretty good. Plus the inactive guys, which would be another twenty or thirty. Okay, okay, and then um, the other clubs was... were all very loose with their membership. It was only with Secret right. Society, it was dues and membership cards. Right. I mean, the other actually, ones yeah. it was pretty much a patch. It, yeah, right. it was, yeah, the other was pretty much a patch <laughs> could draw forty or fifty people each. Okay. So you got six or seven clubs each drawing right. fifty people apiece. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a party. Yeah, yeah and then uh, the other thing too is that San Diego was the center, and actually kind of still is the center of the mod community mm -hmm. in the U.S. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, very know. much was, um, and so thought, a lot of people. Came. A lot of the shift it has shifted in Orange County and There's a lot San of Francisco. Stuff, yeah, but it's not like today, like it was back then, where it's mm. all grassroots and people doing things. But things like Secret Society's events and especially mm. New Sounds of the '60s, yeah, right. Those things brought everybody yeah, here. Those and were so, huge. Like, yeah, right. it didn't matter. There was people here coming from England to come to the shows yeah, here. Right. So, um, yeah, that was, it was what, Dimitri? Was that? No, no, that was yeah. the New Sounds. Was me and it was uh, all you? Yeah, okay. it was me and Ron Friedman. Okay, and uh, but it was it was big enough. Like I think in eighty. 
87, I think it was, where like we did one at San Diego State and you sound. Right. I, remember, was, I went to that one. Yeah, yeah Mod Central that. That was like that. Awesome. And, and uh, my friends thought, yeah, so we got fun. all kinds of celebs here. I'm going like, who? And he goes, oh, well, there's Johnny Marr from the Man. Smiths just showed up and he came with the bangles and yeah. the three o'clock's here. And look, Jellyfish just walked in and like all these people were hanging out at these shows right. here in San Diego. They were flying in for these shows. Yeah. Wow. So I remember pretty, going to that, that one. I, that, was, that was an awesome show. That, I remember that. That's the poor so old guy, fun. poor little kid over in the. The greatest, you know? the greatest anecdote <laughs> as to like. I don't know if I should tell this anecdote, but anyway, we did just claim it. Let's, so. let's, let's, let's call. Uh, let's, let's just do this one here. Okay, just we'll, do this. We'll, we'll no, I'm that. just thinking. One of the one of the things that like could make a career, could break a career, and it's like always a split second decision. At that particular new sounds, we thought Johnny was perfectly willing to play. He thought, yeah, I'll jam with somebody. We asked him, yeah, I'll jam with somebody. Huh? So we found a band. Uh, that we thought would be perfect to do a blues song. He could just play guitar with him. Because I figured that's going to make him a footnote in music history. Whoever plays with one of the Smiths is mm -hmm. going to be. That's mm -hmm. the, the only time in history this ever happened. Yeah. Right. And here we go. And so Johnny borrows a guitar, and he's standing at the side of the stage. And we're uh, getting three of the guys of the band are like super excited. Mm -hmm. And Johnny's just about going, and I'm about to walk up to make the announcement. we got a special guest star here. And the lead singer goes, no. Not going to happen. What? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah. he goes, we got 25 minutes to play. He goes, I'm not going to give up any of our time. Uh, I'm like, what? I'm like, uh, okay, uh, so I had to turn, go back and I said, no, they, well. they, they won't do it. And he, all right, all right. So and then he formed it. Modest Mouse. Then he formed Modest Mouse, right. <laughs> so that was that direct <laughs> wow. tribulation to that. So, And it was funny, too, because year, years later, there was an article written mm -hmm. about this actual incident. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, some people called it, you know, wrote in to deny it, yeah. and then like right below it was a letter from like the drummer going like, "Nope, that's exactly how it happened." <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's uh, like, oh, that's yeah. pretty insane. <clears throat> yeah. That's pretty insane. So, so remember funny, that I, time I asked to jam with you, Scott, and you said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was really cool. But we did. And the, actually, Scootering Magazine covered. I think covered that too. Scootering yeah. Magazine was covered. I remember, I remember in, the, that. in the crowd, all came out for those yeah, things like that. Right. The one thing, the cool thing that we got out of it was that I actually got a, a picture of Johnny Marr wearing a New Sounds of San Diego yeah. T-shirt. Oh, that's right. Uh, that was that was. That cool. was can we, that do was, you have a copy of that around still, somewhere? The picture? Yeah. Yes, yeah, somewhere. I can, we, can we get a scan of it or something? Or if, can, I, if I want to find it, definitely. We got maybe a manual scan of it. Yeah, maybe a manual scan. There we go. Little plug. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, man. That's great. You have anything uh, else to add, or uh... no? Just you know, I mean, uh, at some point, I would like to gather up the clips and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. from the new yeah. sounds thing and oh, yeah. make a documentary out of it because they, yeah, they were all filmed and yeah. recorded and you know all this yeah, kind of stuff. Right. So um, it's out there. I've got right. I've got some really cool footage of that the one that got amazing. broken. up. Remember the one that got broken up downtown? Yes, the yeah. roller skating rink. Was that so it was Soma? Or no, uh, no, that wasn't no. Soma. That was at the because uh, there was one Palisades roller skating rink. I think eighty eighty eight was that or eighty eighty nine was at Soma. Yeah, and then the, la the that last one, one was that uh, we did uh, one in 1999. One more, just okay. to, just to say we did. Yeah, and it was free. And we ended up doing five nights because so right. many bands from around the world just wanted to come. The cool thing about that one was this is totally off kind of kind of off the subject. Oh. I remember um, there was a band called Pine Forest Crunch uh -huh. from Sweden that really wanted to play. Yeah, and uh, I offered them like 500 bucks to, to do the uh -huh. gig, and they said, yeah, okay, fine. And uh, so they pull up in huge trucks, like. Yeah. Like they're playing a sports arena, and this, this, this is a Java Joe's. <laughs> like a big tour, touring right. van, this, this touring is a, trucks. This yeah. is at the old Java Joe's in Ocean Beach. So I'm thinking, right. like, this is kind of weird, right? Yeah. And so we get the sound check to set them up like that, and uh, all these kids start coming over from the hostels in OB, yeah. going like, "What's going on here tonight?" And I'm like, "Well, there's a band playing. Like, yeah. was, what kind of show is it? It's a power pop show, New Sounds of the '60s." And I go, "Why?" And I go like. That's the biggest band in Sweden. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I've never heard of these guys. And I go like, oh, no, no, these are huge. The place was sold out. It's mostly Whoa. Swedish people, right? Uh, okay. At the end of the night. Did they set up like a mini Stonehenge and stuff? Uh, no, no, no. But there were a lot of midgets. No, but, but it was just funny to me because at the end of the night, I went to pay them. Yeah. And they went, oh, no, that's okay. Thank you. We, it's, it's too small an amount anyway. Just give it to the other band. No, they did. Go need a chair. <clears throat> yeah, they said, no, no, take it. Yeah, just yeah. give it to somebody else. Yeah, like, we, had a, we had a fun time. <clears throat> thank you for inviting yeah, us to exactly. your party. Yeah, oh, thank wow. you. Thank you so much. I was like, wow. So the other band's got a bonus. I really yeah. did give it. But it was just kind of like. funny. Wow. Just random. Yeah. Wow. You never know. You never know. Pine Forest Crunch. Crunch. <laughs> pine yeah, forest. I, are they, now everybody right now is yeah, just turned off the podcast and they're clicking away, looking for Pine Forest Crunch. I love it. I love that. <laughs> Let's see. What other little little stuff did we have here? Well, I you know what? Talking I about just, all the mod me the who the who coming to town. Yeah, the who's coming to town. Yeah. You know, um, I don't think we have time this time, but no, we are. You know what we'll do is we're gonna who's coming to town. We're really excited about that. I'm gonna be going up to Los Angeles uh, for that. It's gonna be can't exciting. miss it. Um, and don't forget as well the old cello show. 
So I hate to use that term, but in order to who come into town, but if you if you can't get tickets for San Diego, which you should be able to, they're going to yeah. be at uh, Coachella in Indio in actually, October. Oh, that's going to be they actually had a group on a group on for the who who tickets. I don't know if it's still up there or not, but yeah, I'm, well, I'm yeah. going to the Los the, Angeles show. Yeah. One, one of the one of the last times that that they were here, I'll never forget. Um, two times ago. I'm down at the sports arena uh, doing an interview with somebody else, uh, yeah. completely unrelated. And I wasn't right. going to the Who concert because I, <laughs> I didn't have tickets and so yeah. whatever. And the guy at the end of the, I'm walking out the door. And the guy goes, "Are you coming to the show tonight?" It's a, you know, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. That was the Quadrophenia tour. Yeah, yeah he goes, right. "Come to the show tonight." And I said, um, "No, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it." He goes, "Why not?" He goes, uh, "Well, I go tickets are a little expensive, and my, my rep didn't come through." He goes, "Oh no, we'll take care of you." Yeah. And I said, "Oh cool." He goes, "But there's a catch." And I'm like, okay. the front row center. No, no, they weren't front row center. But, and I go, what's the catch? He goes, I've got a hundred tickets here. He goes, they were supposed to be given out for a press, uh, press junket. He goes, but they did, they weren't given out. Can you find people that take these? So <laughs> can you go be Santa Claus? Yeah. So I, basically, we we went to the Target across the street yeah. uh-huh. from the sports arena and just stood out front and go, Hi, would you like to see a concert tonight? I go, No. They go, just so trying to hand out tickets. I called up everybody I could, got like yeah. 17 people to meet me down there, like instantly. Yeah. Mike right. Camus and those guys came down like, yeah, real fast. Right. Like, They're like, let's go. Cool. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. Well, well right. I remember John Ryan was down there, and uh, I forget who else. We ran into a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I'm gonna randomly say, ran into. It's like Comic Con. Yeah, see right. once, once a year, you see all these people. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, we'll do a little giveaway really quick. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do We got, we got one kind of in honor of uh, Bart being here, actually. Oh, cool. We're doing a whole mod pack. Right. Okay, so here we go. Get ready, everybody. Get ready with your pencils, <laughs> pens. No, no trivia questions. Whatever. Uh, actually, a little question. Yeah. yeah, here we go. Here's what you need to do for the giveaway. The first five people who post on our Vespa Motorsport Facebook page under the Episode 10, 10 Podcast. G-H-A. Episode 10 Podcast, posting with the answer to this question. What year did Bart get his first scooter? What year did Wait. Bart Mendoza get his first scooter? The Hopefully answer that was the P200, right? It was the P200. <laughs> okay, and, okay cool. and we did actually say the year earlier. We did. Okay, yeah. very good. This is what you get. I'm going to guess we're going to say the year. <laughs> you will receive a free Vespa Motorsport mod pack and welcome pack. So basically, uh, all your uh, Royal Air Force and, and, and um, uh, yeah, oh, that's sick. And a nice scarf. You're going to be set up. You're going to look good. You're going to be warm. When are, when are, when, is, when do these get mailed out? Oh, and it's gonna, you're probably going to have a Staring at the Sun CD. They'll go with well, it, Well, I'll right? tell you what. I'll throw in the new Manual Scan CD, the well, new Manual okay. Scan album. Okay, okay, from, we do give you five of them, though. From Spain. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you okay. five copies from of Spain, it, From Spain. Imported. imported from Spain, yes. Wow, okay. Okay, guys. And a, star, and a Staring at the Sun. Okay, cool. <laughs> you got it. All right. So wow, okay. there you go. Review. Write in. Get on it because you're going to want this. Very, right, we're very giving cool. these to Bart. This is a little... Oh, oh cool. Yes. I'll be warm. Yes. Oh, there you go. You, you got it, buddy. All right. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks yeah, for... Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Sorry we ran. We got a little late going on, so... Yeah, but it was for uh, the best reason. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, it was exactly. for a real yeah. good reason. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Hey, everybody. Uh, happy... Happy whatever you guys are up to, but uh, Mother's Day is coming up like this weekend, so this will be long past. Exactly, this will be long past. So hopefully you had an opportunity to hug and kiss your mom. If not, so basically, shame on you. Go back. All you mother, all you mothers out there, I hope you had a good time. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Hey Bart, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Remember, Alex. Remember Mara Vespa coming up too. Yeah. Oh, oh, one, quick, have him. Yeah, one sure. quick little thing. If, yeah. if, I don't know when this is oh, going to yeah, be out. No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, but oh, yeah. real quick. This May 3rd, May 30th. Three, three weeks, probably. May 30th. Okay, yeah. it's been a little late, but yeah. you'll be able to see this on YouTube. May 30th, yeah. Manual Scan is taping an episode of Tonight in San Diego. Oh, so we're going to do three songs live on air, wow. and it'll be that's on cool. YouTube and you know, TV and everything like okay. that. So cool. when's, when you know when that will air? No, it'll get later during the summer, but anyway, we're taping May 30th. And again, keep an eye out for the Tim Mays announcement very soon. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Bart. Thank you. Let's roll it out with some. Manual scan. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Cool. And pray for those who quietly live their lives, never knowing peace. The big tool learn of times we're standing up and fighting for.